Presentation. Another one bites the dust, ladies and gentlemen. Salutations, Utopians. First this year, Josh McDaniels with the Las Vegas Raiders. And now we have the Carolina Panthers coming to a conclusion that they would like to relieve Frank Reich of his duties as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. As you all know, last year he was with the Indianapolis Colts. Rather than taking some time to regroup, he immediately jumps into the Carolina job due to the fact they had the number one overall pick. But that to me was actually ironic. The reason why he joined is the same reason what was his downfall. It is reported that he wanted to go after the, who the Houston Texans ended up drafting, C.J. Stroud. They take Bryce Young. Bryce Young is moving at a record slow pace, if it's even possible. And C.J. Stroud is looking like all-time great. Most passing yards through 11 games for a rookie. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't understand why franchises do this. If you're going to pick a head coach, you got to be all in. As the adage goes, ain't no half-stepping. What in the world are the Carolina Panthers doing bringing in a new coach? And the sad thing is this was a star-studded coaching staff that everyone's bragging about. Josh McCown's quarterback. Oh, or Deuce Staley. This is, this is going to be an illustrious coaching staff. So much hype. Bryce Young, guaranteed prospect. Even if he even if he doesn't have a long career, you know you're going to get at least five great years from him. He does everything good at the minimum. Big time hype machine. Miles Sanders seeking redemption after those fumbles in the Super Bowl. One big flop. I don't understand why ownership goes spends a ton of money on a head coach and then doesn't go all in on exactly the vision. If he didn't want Bryce Young, why would you go against the grain? We've seen the history from Jeff Fisher and Vince Young to Mike Shanahan and RG3. Crazy to think that anyone thinks they could question Mike Shanahan, but ownership decided, no, we're going RG3. Fast forward, you've seen what happened here. It's like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And now, Deuce Staley, this guy left the Detroit Lions in the offseason to go to Carolina. Obviously, it's also more than one reason. Grandma was ill, um, so it got him. But he leaves the two-headed tandem now of Ja Gibbs and Montgomery to go with Miles Sanders and Chuba Hubbard. And now he's out of a job. Who's going to supersede? this monster of a mess now especially with this ownership who dare would take a job they're talking ben johnson who's probably the most innovative mind right now in football period collegiate or pros they want to go after the detroit lions offensive coordinator he turns you down last year what are you going to pay him 100 m's for some unproven coach at the end of the day there's a distinction between being a head coach and an offensive coordinator and that's exactly what it's going to take probably 100 m's to get him to leave the cozy, comfortable situation he has in Detroit. Not to mention, now with this quarterback controversy, the opportunity if Jared Goff, who now I'm starting to believe that's Ryan Gosling over there playing quarterback, not Jared Goff. They substitute Hendon Hooker in there and he takes off under his regime. The price just keeps going higher. And though I think Jared Goff has been outstanding considering the circumstance and what he arrived to with Detroit and where the team is now with just a few options, Josh Reynolds coming off the Rams practice squad, if Hendon Hooker as a dual threat quarterback, knowing what he was in college, he returns stronger than ever because you know sometimes in breaks, when you have breaks, the bones actually come back stronger, grow stronger. You're telling me that he's not going to be commanding whatever he wants, whatever name your price kind of deal to leave the Lions? I'm telling you right now, Carolina is in a world of trouble. You're hearing names. Some of these guys are, I don't know if they're clickbaiting, uh, Nick Saban, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Nick Saban. What was the other guy? Uh, Bill Belichick. Man, you, you better calm down and think like, uh, uh, you know, 
think of somebody's defensive coordinator or something like that. Nobody in their right mind is going to leave their situation to go with an owner who fires a guy after 11 games. There's a, there's a lack of reality in all this. Carolina, I don't know what you're going to do. Such a story-rich franchise, and no pun intended. And now you're in the middle of nowhere. Just sad. Stick with what you chose to do. The coach comes before the player. The player's career only has so long. A coach has a more higher probability. But the way the league is moving these days, you're here today and gone tomorrow. Poor Eric Bieniemy. He's like, look, this guy got fired from the Colts. Then a year, not even a year later, he's in a new job. And here I have to prove myself in Washington with no line in a fifth-round quarterback. No diss on late-round quarterbacks. Arguably the greatest was a six-round pick. But... Yeesh, what's going on, NFL? All right, Utopians, quick scoop on what I thought was going on. All the best.